We're talking deadline day, which approaches very quickly indeed. Thursday is the final day for Premier League clubs to make their transfers in or out. Mm -hmm. It looks like the biggest signing in the next couple of days is going to be Anthony from Manchester United. It looks like Eric Ten Hag's former player is going to be reuniting with him. Is it what Manchester United need? Well, I think when I watch the Langer, yeah, then obviously they've got a lot of, um, he's got a lot of potential and they, they, they've got high hopes for him. But I think that when you look at Anthony and the way he cuts in, I, you know, I, watched, I was watching some, some of his stuff again on the weekend and he's got, he gives me an Iron Robin vibe about him, the way he cuts in, the way he links play, his skills, the goals he scores. And I think that that's what they need more of because I was watching the Langer the other day um, against, um, it was Man United. Liverpool? Southampton. Oh, Southampton. Oh, Southampton, oh, Southampton, oh, yeah. This Southampton, weekend. This yeah. weekend, yeah. And I didn't think he'd done enough of that so as Dallow can get outside. And I don't think they get enough goals themselves with a player coming in like that and then just curling it in. I think Jaden Sancho will probably be on the right-hand side trying to do the same thing. And that's why they need the wing-backs getting forward. But, like, this guy, you know, it'd probably be add-ons. And he's somebody that Ten Hag said, I want him. And, you know, they, they're, they're going to make it happen. You know, if he can hit it off like I've seen what he's done in the Dutch league. And obviously it's a very, it's a different standard to what we, we've got here in the Premier League. But if he can, he's going to be a magnificent signing. And the fact that they've given Eric Ten Hag £80 million to spend on a player that is very clearly linked with him, that is very clearly his player, it's, it's a message in the sense as well. Yeah, and I think anyone who, after those early few results, thought there were doubts about the long-term future, I think it, this shows that there, there is a, definitely a bit of patience here that maybe there hasn't been in recent years. And he's developed Anthony so much when he was at Ajax. I mean, he's taken his game to another level, helped him push on into the Brazilian senior team. Like, he's really transformed him as a player. And I think their relationship and their bond is so good that I don't necessarily think the step up to the Premier League will be perhaps too much for him because he knows that Ten Hag will guide him through that process. I think that's very different, perhaps, to bringing a player in from the Bundesliga or Liga or whatever, where you don't have that relationship already and you're trying to make that jump. Even Erlen Haaland in those first couple of games for City, people were questioning yeah. how long it would take him to adapt and now he's found his feet. So I think that, will, that, that sort of situation will be expedited by the fact that Ten Hag can kind of take him under his wing and say, you know, you can do it because yeah. I've seen you do it before. Don't you think it will be harder, though, because... The manager himself is trying to navigate himself and teach himself the Premier League way. So how, do you, how does he teach a player when he's still basically Learning a novice for the, for the Premier I League? I think surely it will come down to the, the style of play, what he wants. And what he wants is he wants him to be on that right-hand side, cutting inside, obviously for whoever the wing-back is going to be, to cut outside. But more of a threat when he does cut inside. Because yeah. you look at Man United, they need to get goals because obviously if Ronaldo's not playing at the moment, you know, especially what we saw, what we done last season. They're not scoring too many. He will bring goals and he knows what he is capable of. And this is why people talk about how much it is. I don't, I've got no problem with that. I think you have to pay what you have to pay now. It's just, it's just the way it goes. And like I say, if he can fulfill because Ten Hag trusts him, He's going to be a, a, a top player. I think. He, like I, also, said, yeah. I think Ten Hag is also, <clears throat> unlike some other managers that have come into new clubs. Obviously, Anthony hasn't been part of the preseason, but I think he's had such a long preseason now, yeah. where he would have been doing all that prep, and even once he finished Ajax, all that prep of all the other teams to know that once he's got the players and and he would have had targets at the start of the, the window, I think he would have known how it was going to fit. Yeah. And it won't be that he needs to rush and, and for it to make sense. But, I mean, who knows? Because United have been burnt how many times before? Yeah. But, but he's also, Ten Hag, made a point of saying the players aren't doing what I'm asking them to do. This is not about them executing my poor plan. Mm. This is about them poorly executing my, my instructions. Yes. So finally he's got a player in pretty much, who we'll knows exactly yes. what he yeah. wants. Well, that's exactly right, because, like, he's, he's saying, you know something, I'm, I'm going to buy him, because I'm telling him to do it, they're not doing it. And it's like I say, I wouldn't want to dig a langer out, but, like, he's played a couple of games, and I've not seen too much of that. Yeah. What I see, the focal point of what I see, what he does, is he gets that ball, he's got great skills, cuts, he comes inside, curls it in the top corner, and stuff like that. That's what he sees that he can do, and he's bought somebody, and it's cost him a few quid, to get that done. Is Ronaldo on the way out? Um, well, he hasn't started the last couple of games and they've won them. Like I say, they're going to need goals because last season, if his goals wasn't there, I don't know what would have happened with Man United. But I think that um, he probably is on the way out. It doesn't seem like he's not. Otherwise, he might have started the last game or the last couple of games. But they're try they seem like they're trying to get through without him. I don't know if, 
personally, I don't. I think that they should try and maybe move him on. Mm. It might Even though the word officially is mm. that, and this, uh, Ten Hag is saying he's still part of my plans, it does look as though that move is drawing closer, whichever way it's been driven. Ronaldo uh, has been not quoted, but his views have been represented in articles over the weekend yeah. where it's um, very much putting forward his point of view and how frustrated he's felt at, at Manchester United. Could the sticking point here be where he goes? Yeah. It, it's wages, I mean, really. Yeah. Who, who can afford and him? And the entourage that comes with him. Yeah, I, I just don't know who can afford to take on that, the ho everything, yeah, yeah, not just financially, but everything that comes with having a player like that. I think that's why he's running out of options. Yeah. I mean, thinking about where Arsenal were with Aubameyang and how that went right down to the wire, as I'm sure lots of people have seen in the recent documentary, like how that went down to the wire and they had to figure something out because there were so few clubs that could afford mm. to take him. And I think that's going to be the same situation right up until the the deadline they're going to be ringing clubs and saying can you make space in your budget and I think for United it will be really important to make space for themselves yeah. because they're, they're not really offloading enough at the moment to free up probably as much as they would like to work with mm. Look it's horrible to say but maybe it's time for him to accept he might be part of it, he's in rotation and he's not the main person because at the end of the day he is getting old he's, he looks phenomenal, he still works hard and as you said that he still gets you load of goals but at the minute, it looks like the team's going in a different direction. They're picking up better results without him in the team. So maybe he either fits into the way they play yeah. or he comes off the bench and does what he has to do. That's, that's the way I look at it because, like, like Flo said, he's going to have problems getting rid of him. And at the minute, it doesn't look like anybody wants to take him. As Manchester United are starting to build a bit of momentum, they've got Leicester mm. on Wednesday, which, yeah. given Leicester's start to the season, might mean that Manchester United can make it three wins in a row. Yeah, you look at Leicester, they look... Um... Even even against ten men Chelsea, they didn't look great. I thought Chelsea did def did do well um, in respect of defensively when they did go to ten men, but they were still, for me, for a team with ten men, still playing through Leicester very easily. Uh, in the end, winning a game that I thought that Leicester should have been taking more advantage of, and you know we, we're sitting with Fofana, you know, it looks like he's going to be going to to Chelsea, and you know for, for for big money. But the fact is, is that. That's what happens with Leicester. They do move on, these players. They move on. And it does feel very much, with, with all due respect to them, stepping stony. That's good. But, That's but, the, the, but the, point, the point was that, that, was all, that space was always filled by a younger player yeah. who was coming up, or at least, like Fofana, had come in and, and developed a little bit before he got put into the, the first team. And that doesn't... It's the gaps behind the players yeah. who are moving on that, that might well be the in issue. But for Fana to Chelsea to play potentially alongside Koulibaly <laughs> looks an excellent yeah. choice for Chelsea. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I would ask Thomas Tuchel how many defenders does he need? How many is enough? Because yeah. he is kind of stockpiling these now. But we know the issues they've had with injury and they've got players who are a little bit older as well. So it makes sense for him as well because he wants to play Champions League football. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I, I, I would be quite concerned about Leicester. And there's yeah. been these concerns now for well over a season, really. Last season was difficult. Fans weren't happy with that. I haven't had the best summer recruitment-wise. Recruitment They've lost a lot of players, a lot of big characters as well. And you just don't really see where the reset and where the rejuvenation is going to come from. Is it going to be Rogers stepping down or is it going to be more players having to make way? Because mm. it's just not working now. And he keeps coming out and saying, we want belief, we want bravery, but that's not going to solve a lot of his issues. Mm. So a good few days then for Manchester United, who register much-needed back-to-back wins for the first time since February. And have a look at this. It ends what was a nightmare-losing run away from home, where they'd lost their last seven on the road, conceding 21 goals in the process. But they've ended that uh, with that much-needed win um, in that game. And to be honest, after what happened on Monday against Liverpool, are we seeing this, kind of those shoots of recovery under Eric Ten Hag at United? Um, there's definitely confidence and, and consistency and understanding that. But, um, you know, maybe it was a bit too early of us to judge him coming into what we know was really, really difficult, but they've turned a corner. Mm. But it's still early. They've got to keep going with that momentum and keep going with the style that he's trying to implement. Yeah. I love the Bruno Fernandes goal. What did you think about it? Because yeah. a lot of the team members were involved and it looked like it was almost coached from the training ground. Yeah, listen, these are really difficult finishes because when the ball's on the way to you, you're thinking, do I go laces, do I go side foot? It takes about a second to get to him, but he's got to make that decision. Everybody gets in, in the right position. It's a lovely pullback. You know, it's, it's a fair distance out and he sticks it in the corner with his side foot. 
Listen, I would expect him to hit the target. And he, he now is starting to influence the game a little bit more like he did start of last season. Yeah. What that does do is add fuel to <laughs> this theory he plays better without Ronaldo in the lineup. What do you think? Well, I think when you, when you play with... Um, you know, it's for that goal there, like I said in the earlier ones, defenders are dropping, dropping, dropping. Mm. And when you have strikers that give you that pace and that fear, defenders will drop. When you play like Fernandes, who's in that 10 space, that gives you more space, more sure. time, and get, you get those goals. So yeah. I can see why that theory might work, because Ronaldo's not going to run in behind. Mm. Less space for him to then do what he does. One interesting incident in that game, should Southampton have had a penalty for a handball, <coughs> or maybe two handballs on yeah. Scott McTominay? <laughs> I don't know. I, 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 I think it might have been harsh, to be fair, because, yes, the ball does hit his hand, but I just, I just think... You're, it's in, for me, the way he's moving his body, it's, it's in a natural position. He's stopping, his arms are out a little bit, it hits his hand, yes, it does, clearly, but I think they get this one right. Absolutely yeah. spot on. Currently. Yeah, common, common sense there, I think. You know, it's, what more can he do? So, yeah. I you can't normally right. put common sense through referees, though. <laughs> <laughs> you know I mean? Chris can hear oh, us, sorry, you know. Chris still here. Is he still here? <laughs> well, I didn't realise he was still no. here. <laughs> let's, let's just hope for now he's not. <laughs> OK, we're off to Molyneux next for Wolves against unbeaten Newcastle.